And in another astonishing development in the SNP finance probe, the Sunday Mail has revealed that Scottish police are on the hunt for SIM cards linked to burner phones as part of their bombshell investigation. Today, the SNP civil war erupted in Westminster, as leader in the House of Commons Stephen Flynn admitted that he only found out the party's auditors had quit five months after the event. But despite all of that, Kelly Given, a rabid SNP member, a columnist, by the way, for the pro-separatist propaganda newspaper The National, appeared on the BBC, where she gave a glowing review of party management. The SNP are forced as well to be the most transparent because we are held to such a higher standard. You know, the Tories get away with murder. They get away with anything. And it's like they're not held accountable in public ever. And it's like they, they don't take any accountability. There's hardly any scrutiny on them. I mean, we've had the, like a forensic tent in the ex-First Minister's garden on full view for everyone. We've got people camping outside her house to see to video her leaving her house. Like, that is transparency. What else do you possibly want? Hmm, wonder why the tent was there. SNP members have expressed concern that scheming Sturgeon could be arrested next. However, the inheritor of this chaos, Humsey Eustace, who met Rishi Sunak tonight at Westminster, is ignoring the ever-growing calls to suspend Sturgeon while this police investigation is ongoing. And the columnist for the Sunday Times, Alex Massey, wrote yesterday, Eustace's tenure in office has been an almost entirely unmitigated disaster prompting suggestions that he is, in effect, First Minister in name only, at the mercy of events rather than in command of them. Neil Oliver, I mean, that's most certainly the case, isn't it? But he hitched himself to scheming Sturgeon. He didn't ask many questions, so doesn't he deserve this mess? Yes, he does, Dan. You, you say hitched. He's, he's, he, hitched I th he thought he hitched his wagon to a star, but you know, it's, it's, it's brutally apparent that he's, he's hitched his wagon to a burnt-out lump of space junk that fell to earth and cratered in, his, in uh, Nicholas Sturgeon's mother-in-law's cul-de-sac. Uh, he's, he is a victim of his own uh, inability he is in a, in a party of politicians who are incapable of running a country. And the SNP shouldn't really be allowed to run a tombola, a, a town fete. But in a party of incapables, he is the incapables incapable. He has failed at everything. He failed at transport. He failed at the judiciary. He failed at health and kept falling upwards. And now SNP's most incapable incapable is, is First Minister. Uh, and when it comes to getting the job done, the, the SNP have proven time and time again to be incapable. They, 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 are, they are not interested in the day-to-day, -day, the quite frankly uh, routine business of running a country. You know, they can't provide ferries where they're needed for the islands. They, they can't improve life expectancy. They can't deal with the drugs deaths. They can't deal with the fact that under their bailiwick education has fallen through the floor and has had to be taken off of the international league tables and it's because they have no interest in and far less the ability to run a country all they do all they've ever done is promise utopia and the undeliverable they've been promising independence yeah. since the day and hour of their conception yeah and it's that jam tomorrow that, that undoes them and, and neil it, is that why you know, is it, 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 so, sorry, Neil, I was just going to say, is that why their supporters uh, forgive them for so much? I mean, we literally see a woman on the BBC trying to suggest that Sturgeon has been transparent as leader because there's a police tent outside her house, the police having just arrested her husband, when you've got the SNP leader at Westminster saying... He had no idea that the auditors had even been sacked. I mean, it seems to me like the opposite of transparency. Why are the supporters still trying to make excuses? That was a truly bizarre clip that you played. Uh, because you plainly, to, to anyone you know, with any sense, there's a big difference between being transparent and being investigated by the police. Yeah. You, th those, are, those, are two very, those are two very different states of being. Uh, you know, because you've been because you're being investigated for alleged wrongdoing is not the same as being transparent 
before those events unfold. The, yeah, you are right. You actually you do touch on the on the nub of the matter there. Uh, the, there's always been a hard core of SNP support, small but very vocal and very determined, that is, a, that is addicted only to the fantasy of utopia, that promised independence that's never been realistic and is never going to come. But because that's all they care about, they are, they are completely oblivious to anything else. They don't care about the sleaze. They don't care about, you know, when a when a, a, a finance minister is uh, has to leave his post because he's been sending peculiar texts to a 16-year-old schoolboy. They don't care about the incompetence. They don't care about the failure. They don't care about the disgracing of Scotland on the world stage. They hear the promise of jam tomorrow and they close their eyes to everything else. You know, Nicola Sturgeon could have eaten a baby on live television and the hardcore would still have voted for her. There is a complete ambivalence to reality on the part of that hardcore. They will never stop believing in the SNP. And that is that is just a fact of life. But, the, you know, the, the tragedy, the real tragedy is that there's a terrible, uh, what's the word? There's an inevitability or a predictability about all of this. When it, when it comes to getting the job done, the SNP just cannot do it. They can't build yeah. ferries. They can't fix the health service. They can't fix education. They can't do any of that because their eye has never been on that ball. They're not interested in it. They're a single issue protest group. And Hamza Youssef is, has always and only been Nicola Sturgeon's nodding dog. Yeah. He promised only more Sturgeon at a time when Scotland demonstrably needed a whole lot less of Sturgeon. So there we have it. You know, Scotland is being promised more of the same that has laid it so low. And unless and until the SNP shuffle off the stage into the oblivion that awaits, Scotland will exist in this hopeless limbo. I know. Uh, just a very quick word, Neil. D do you think it opens the door at all for an Alex Salmon comeback? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that whole uh, independence-driven single-issue uh, uh, aspect of Scotland's recent history has bored everybody to tears, and it has driven the country into the ditch. You know, we are stuck as a nation, as a people, somewhere hopeless at the moment. And I think if there is any, if there is any sense, if there is any grasp left on reality, then independence. In that is, which is to say independent-minded political spokespeople will step forward into this abyss and say, let's just get down to the business of running a country and putting Scotland back where it belongs, which is the proud and yeah. sensible country that it always was totally. and it always will be when we get back to reality. Hear, hear. Powerful stuff. The man we wanted to hear from on this, Neil Oliver. Thank you so much. Of course, important legal note, the allegations surrounding the SNP's finances are denied by all parties involved.